All right, so just a quick video today to talk about the error first callback pattern. Now for you computer science guys out there, this is also known as the continuation passing style where callbacks are continuation functions. So this is something that you're going to encounter in Node quite a bit. Uh, this is a pattern that's been around since before JavaScript. It's been around since the beginning of Node. It was uh, a very common pattern. Um, you'll see this a little bit less now that promises exist. Promises are a way of avoiding callback hell, where you have callbacks nested inside callbacks, nested inside callbacks, and so on. So what we're going to be doing here is just seeing how this pattern works so you can recognize it, understand how it works, and understand how you can use it to your advantage. So I've got an example here where I'm importing the file system. This is a just a Node.js script. I'm inserting, in, importing the file system module and calling read file, I'm just opening a text file. The text file is not important. Uh, the file system is not important. What is important here is this method needs a callback. So the callback function could be written inside of here like this, or you know, you can have some function somewhere else in your code that you are calling. I'm just going to put it all together here so we can see it in one spot. This callback function gets called when read file is finished doing whatever it does with this. Now, inside of here, there's two arguments, and the first argument is going to be an error. Now, it's possible that nothing went wrong. So, error could be no. There could be absolutely nothing wrong. The function ran perfectly. So this is how we handle things and exit out of our function very efficiently, very quickly, if there was a problem. So we can say, you know what? If there is an error, basically saying, if this thing is not null, then what do you want to do? Well, I can throw the error. I could just return. I could return the error. However you want to handle it. You know, there's different things that you can do, but this is the key. First thing you do inside your function is you check to see if this thing is not null. And if it's not, then don't run the rest of the code. Okay, so that's in Node.js. I mean, if I run the code now, there's not going to be any error. We just say node and main.js. There it is. We're logging out the data, which is right here. This is the buffer, the stream that we get out of that text file. Okay, so it worked. There was no error. Great. Now, in the browser, same sort of idea. We have a function that we're going to call. So this is sort of like that file system read function. We're going to be calling that. And we have to pass to it two things. Here's some data. Well, there could be a whole bunch of things. But the last parameter is going to be a callback function down here, this is where we're going to call it. So if I'm calling this function, I need to pass some data in there. I'm going to do something with it. And then when I'm finished, I'm going to call the callback. Now inside that callback, there could be an error. So if error, we can return it, we can throw it, we can write something out, whatever it is that we want to do. Um, inside of here, I'm using a try catch, or rather I'm using a try catch around this. So if the error gets thrown, It'll jump down to the catch. Down inside the catch, we can actually handle the error, do something with it. So let's write a little example script just so we can see this functioning. Inside of here, I'm going to create my own error object. We'll set it to null to begin with. So now we have this value that we can return. With that value, I'm going to just do some basic checking. I'm going to say, I'm going to pass in a string and I'm going to convert it to uppercase or maybe do some find and replace. Okay, great. We can do that. So if it was something as simple as some val equals, uh, let's do a find and replace. We're going to look for the word hello and replace it with the word howdy. Okay, great, simple. But I can only do that if what they sent into my function was a string. If it's a boolean or a number or something else, this isn't going to work. So we'll do a check. We'll say if 
type of sumval if that is string, I'm going to go ahead and do this. But if it's not, I'm going to have an error. So we're going to say error equals, let's make it a type error, because really that's what we're talking about here. No string provided. Like that. At the very end of this function, we're going to call this callback function. And the first thing that we provide, it's this function right here that we're calling. First thing we're going to provide is this error object, followed by our resulting value. So we're sending those two things back. Some val could be the original value that came in here if there was an error. But we're going to get the error. That's the important thing here. Now down inside of here, if error, throw error. Otherwise, success. So let's run this. Oh, I'm missing the replace function, exactly what we were going to do here. There we go. So we're doing a string find and replace. Find this, replace it with that. That's what I'm missing. And there it is, success, howdy world. So it ran, it worked. But what if we're going to call this, let's do it one more time. So that one we know works. What if I was going to pass in a Boolean like this? So I'm calling the same function again. It's going to be true. And this should return an error to us. So we get the success, nothing else coming out. So the second time, we didn't get a return that said success. There was an error. But we need to do something with this error. Right now, our catch isn't doing anything. So down inside the catch, uh, I could do something as simple as this. We could say console.warn and write out the error, all of its details, and there it is. And there's the message, no string provided. So we could break this up. We could make it something simpler. We could say, here's our message, and we're going to say, I want error.name and error.message. Let's actually, instead of on the same line, let's do this. Let's put a new line character in there. There we go. Type error, no string provided. Okay, so we're getting that information back. We could provide a little bit more. Something I like to do when I'm handling errors is instead of just creating this type, we can create additional properties. So I could do something like type provided. So I'm just making up a property and I'm adding it to the error object. Uh, error objects are extensible. You can add your own properties to them. So this is going to be what the data type was of the thing that was passed in. So this. So now that is available in my error object, which I'm taking here, passing back to here, and I'm throwing this error, which is then going to be caught. So we can add that here and say message plus equals, or we could do concat, whichever way you want to do it. And the values I'm going to add in there are going to be error.type provided, something like that. There we go. So no string provided, boolean sent instead. And let's format this a little bit nicer. So we'll say we'll add the new line there. There we go. Three lines of text. A little bit formatted, a little bit nicely, more nicely formatted error message. And I mean, you can see that I'm repeating here this callback function. So if you want, you can extract that, set it into another function. It's really just this pattern where the error object is the first thing that's being passed in. And then you handle that in the first line of your function. That's the key to this thing working. So none of the rest of the code runs if there is an error. When there is, whatever your catch mechanism is, if you've got a global error handler, you deal with that error and you know that you can add additional properties in there to provide a little bit more information back to the devel developer about what exactly went wrong. All right, so I hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks for watching.